Sure. So, um, you know, as uh, your audience may know, flow cytometry is not one of the uh, criteria, you know, doesn't provide a diagnostic criteria in classification of cl chronic myeloid neoplasms. However, we do find it very helpful because, you know, if I'm dealing with um, a questionable MDS, finding an aberrant uh, stem cell population by flow cytometry really helps me establish that diagnosis while I wait for the cytogenetics to come back. Oftentimes you can have reactive dysplasia. Let's say in the, com in the case of copper deficiency, you can have morphologic dysplasia that can look very severe, often mimicking changes that, we, that you would see in myelodysplastic syndrome but you know, the flow will look normal. And so that will make me question the, the diagnosis of MDS. And I can say something doesn't look right here. Uh, or, you know, conversely, if I'm dealing with a low grade MDS where the, uh, or where the dysplasia is subtle, but I see that the phenotype of the stem cells is abnormal, that helps me say, this is probably MDS while I wait for the mutations to come back. So I think it's definitely helpful. And I hope that we'll see that flow cytometry will be used more and more or some kind of phenotyping, high dimensional flow cytometry in the uh, surveillance of patients with MDS that are getting treated. Because I think, you know, we do see this anecdotally, although we're not, you know, doing this systematically, where patients get treated and the phenotype of their stem cells improves and becomes closer to normal as they respond to, uh, as they start to respond to therapy.